I gave a presentation to my old art academy this month. Feeling very unqualified to talk after just doing this for five years, I looked through my archive and I compiled a list of projects I completed. It turned out to be quite a lot and also quite diverse. I remember those talks when I was in my second year of fashion design, thinking how cool it was that those professionals were doing, but also feeling a little bit detached because it felt so far away. Looking through that list of projects as a whole felt pretty intimidating. That's a long list, not something very relatable to share. Because it was a period of five years, I could also see the ups and the busies and the downs and the blocks. Every time I recovered from a low, that would be a light bulb moment. Something new, something exciting to get me to that high moment. My presentation turned into a 45 minute talk about my life, starting with how I got fired from a part-time job, registering myself as a freelancer with three months of savings and Googling for my first paid design job. We worked our way up from there. I don't think there's a lot of people that will walk the same path as me because I made it myself. But what I would like to inspire people to do is to find their own path and sticking with it. I tried a little bit of a different approach than usual um, because I've been really into theory of oil painting because I kind of do stuff and I have no idea um, if it should work or how paint actually works. I mean, I do it very intuitively. For this one, I thought I would try uh, some natural tones, see how that works. And I want to work with more uh, glazings on this one. I'm up actually going to try that on the big one to the side as well. But um, yeah, uh, so I, it, it's a little bit of a different approach, but you, at least you can see kind of how I get that sketch to the first underpainting. And then after this, there's going to be multiple layers to get to that colorful result. So these colors are probably all going to disappear, but they are there to kind of seep through the rest of the painting later on. On Instagram, I asked some of you to get some questions ready for me so I could answer them in a future video. And why not start with the question, where do the concepts from your pieces come from? Whenever I start with a new painting series, I always start with the visual part and not with the concept part. I think what if I do it the other way around, the paintings become very stiff and they're just overthought. <laughs> um, so I start out by <coughs> so I start out by making reference film uh, and I take screenshots from them. And either it's me, it's a self-portrait or it's someone else, uh, it's the same process. But I kind of make a bulk of raw footage that I then take into Photoshop and make into collages. So I'm still not thinking of a concept, I'm just looking at the visual part and poses I find interesting, uh, silhouettes I like, and cutouts or crops that I like. And that's kind of leading into what image I'm going to use. If my collage, if my digital collage is ready, then uh, I start a painting. I usually start another one and another one, and I have like three going on at the same time. And that's kind of when I'm starting to notice a certain theme going around. For the ones that I'm painting right now, uh, I wasn't noticing at the time, but I am noticing it now that it's very much about taking up space, 
being big, uh, big gestures, and they kind of don't really fit in their canvas. So I'm noticing that that is a concept that I am developing, but it's still not done yet. It might be visual now already, which is good, but I think it's only really important to talk about that in a clear way once I kind of get the paintings out to the public. So I guess that's just a part of the storytelling of the painting series. Before that, I don't think it really matters that much because it's just for me and I understand my paintings myself, um, but getting a written uh, concept uh, and especially through titles that really works to kind of push your public in a direction that you want and it can tell like an additional story instead of just the visual part. So to actually answer your question of where my concept come from, um, they are very intuitive and they just develop over time and I don't think of them before. I just make images that I like and the thing that I want to say at that moment, it kind of just gets out. Do you ever equate your worth to how much you're creating and how do you detach from that? That's a hard one. And it's also a very relatable one. I think that is something that you'll never really get rid of because yes, I do, but I'm trying not to, but I'm also noticing that the only way to make me, to make myself feel better about this is to go create. So it's kind of a weird cycle because there are times where I don't create because I'm working on other parts of my business. It could be videos, it could be teaching, could be anything else. And I just don't have enough time to create in that time. But I am also creating, I'm just creating a different thing. And I think that is, uh, at least for me, sometimes hard to separate. And I think if you take a break and you come back, at least for me, I feel 100% more productive. So it kind of catches up on that taking time for breaks. Hello. I'm having a really good painting day today. I'm making really big steps as well, which I'm really glad about because I felt like the biggest chance of ruining this would be losing momentum, losing the energy in the beginning. I have the base down. This stuff, this part, I want it to be more yellow. I might actually try that with a glazing technique um, because I have that color. <laughs> Face was a bit of a struggle. Um, I think she's ish there. <laughs> and I really, really, really like this part because it's so, it's different than from the sketch but it's so soft and delicate. How do I get people to know me as a self-developing, self-taught artist? I kind of went into that in my presentation as well. And in the beginning, I literally told everyone that I knew that I was drawing. And the funny thing is that people that I've known for 15, some even 20 years, they told me, oh, I didn't know you drew, <laughs> even though I'd finished literally a fashion design studies in which I drew. So once I told people that I knew that that was the thing that I was going to do for a job, um, I started getting my work out there through social media, um, treating it like a job, literally posting every day, creating a lot. And I also did a lot of physical events in the beginning. In life illustrating, I did a lot. So I met like a lot of people during those events. And I guess it's kind of word of mouth at some point i think the best clients if you want to do client work are via word of, word of mouth and it's just keeping go keep going um it we, people will find you eventually you just have to be there when they find out
It's definitely not a fast process. Keep in mind that I've been doing this for five years now and the first two-ish years were, I think, the hardest for getting people to find me. I really wanted to record a video today, but I'm sneezing. There's a storm outside. I used to be on the first floor, so I was like inside of the trees, and now I'm kind of over the trees. It's really pretty. It makes me want to take a walk, go outside, but then at the same time, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> sneezing <laughs> so maybe I should just stay inside and it's also a storm This is the current light situation. How sad is this? It's 5.30 <laughs> and it's just pitch dark. In a little bit, I'm moving up the table uh, because I want to, I really want to move up there. Like I hated seating in the, sitting in the middle of the room. I'm looking forward to arranging all that stuff, like my actual desk area. And I'm looking forward to having a wall. <laughs> I just looked up some lights for this space and it's so much options. I don't know what to get, but I do need to get something. This is terrible. This is really, this is unworkable. So I also day, this must I do, but I will do it. In my one, the table is cancelled. Yeah. But that is, of course, then you get that point and then he says, ha 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 Yeah! Oh, I'm really happy that he's here. That he's here. Staat. Yeah. And you have also those cool tail things that you so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.
Oh, dit ziet, echt, dit ziet er echt niet uit. <laughs> het is echt zo donker. Prachtig. I got some goodies. This plant. Fun. I don't know, curly grass friend that I'm gonna put in the windowsill. One more thing that I got. Is this really cool lamp? Um, I know in the last vlog I hung the lamp over there, but I actually really hate it. It's way too bright. So I want to see if there's another solution where there's a couple of brighter lamps that kind of light up the place. Maybe one big one. But for now, I got this one. Look how cool it looks. It looks a little bit like a light bulb got a tumor and then it mutated. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. So I only got one because I think it might be nice to have a few different ones. And let's just see how bright it's going to be. Maybe put it over here or this one is not. This one is too low. And I have this one as well, but this one is also I think this low. one is going to like you're going to bump your head all the time. I love this guy, it's so cute. And this one gets a temporary spot because it doesn't have the right hanging gear yet. And as you can see, my table is finally over here. So that means I can finally arrange my drawing uh, materials over here. And I don't have to worry about carrying it from one place to the other and not feeling good at the place I'm working at. Finally at the right place. There's a few things that I want to get done today. Uh, I have like a big to-do list of things that I haven't gotten the time for. There's one thing I want to order Christmas cards and I really want to do that now. If you uh, signed up for my Patreon, uh, one of the rewards, rewards, is that I send you a Christmas card with my art on December. And uh, I am looking forward to that, but I just haven't got the time to or I haven't found the time to uh, decide which one, what kind of card I'm gonna get. And if I wait any longer, it's gonna be super busy at the printers. So that needs to be fixed. And then there's a few tiny tasks that just have to get done uh, today. I just made a pile of paper that has been lying around my studio. And I want, a, want to create a work week for myself, basically where I just create art. Um, just to focus on production a little bit. And seven days seems like a reasonable amount of time. If I, if I finish earlier, that's good. But if I don't, that's also fine. Drawings that are hanging here, um, I made before. That's this one in 2020, I believe, 2021. And these ones, I think last year, they're kind of the vibe that I want to go for. Posted a imaginary friend lesson on my Patreon. And that was kind of the start for me. Like, oh, do I still like that? Um, it's basically focusing on portraits, no reference at all, just going with what the material wants. And I want to make 25. <laughs> When it's that much, you can kind of focus on, like I don't want to just draw a pretty portrait, I want to draw an ugly one and a weird one, and something that I didn't expect, and that's only to be reached if I do a lot of them. What do you do when you're stuck in painting and what is your favorite work? 
So if I get stuck on painting, I usually try to do something else. Either I start another painting, which is why I work on a few different works at the same time, or I do something completely different like I'm doing here with my project week. I feel like I missed working on paper, which is why I wanted to do a lot of it. Giving yourself borders of what you want to do works really well for me, but I don't want to give myself restrictions in painting all the time. So that's why I'm doing it with uh, a project week. I've also done a little bit of animation when I felt stuck. I did a pottery class last month, which was very fun. Just doing different things that are not in painting helped me actually paint better and get unstuck. And my favorite work, I think, is really hard because I'm usually a fan of the work that I'm making now. So I guess that answers it. But I know that when I'm done, it's not going to be my favorite work anymore. There are a few favorite paintings. I'm going to pop them up right here that are still, I don't know, they're still just they just touch me in a way uh, or they were made at a certain time which felt like a breakthrough or they were very emotional and I think that's why they stick with me but I know those paintings are gonna change every time I want to paint the sketch of this one today I'm also getting a little bit of a cold that's my voice <laughs> We will end this Q&A with one of life's questions. What are your short-term goals and long-term ambitions? I've been thinking about this one a lot the last year because I feel like I always had this long-term goal and I haven't had one for a few years now. I mean, I enjoy what I'm doing and I think that is good enough but also it's very nice to just have this goal to work towards too. And I haven't really had that. Um, I think one of my long-term goals that keep popping up is just to be able to keep doing this and have less stress about money and a studio and how are we all gonna afford all this and I think that one just keeps popping up but it's just such a boring goal <laughs> that it could be a little bit more guided I guess what I'm really enjoying now is sharing my art practice with you and I'm really 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 enjoying all the reactions these videos are getting that it helps inspire you in your own art journey and just basically talking and having this sense of community i guess i did not know that i would be loving that part of sharing my art practice with you so much so i feel like youtube and sharing um has been becoming more of a goal lately even though I thought I would go more in the traditional route of galleries and I wanted to have shows honestly I mean it would be nice to have shows of course but I'm not very interested in it as a goal anymore um, it's more the way that it is and it's nice to work towards something and have that collection of paintings being shown to the public of course but i think that i get much more fulfillment from people responding to that so 
I guess what I want to say is that I get a lot of fulfillment from interacting with people that look at my art and feel inspired by it. Either if that is through YouTube or through uh, an art show or anything else, it doesn't matter as long as I can interact with people that actually watch my art and not the people that are necessarily selling my art. I don't really have goals of showing in big contemporary galleries or whatever. It would be nice, but it's more looking for fulfillment in what I'm already doing. And I think if I go to the short-term goals, they would be financial goals because I'm building this platform. Uh, I'm sharing my art lessons on Patreon, which is really cool. I have this goal for myself where uh, if we get to 50-ish patrons, it will cover around my studio rent, which would be amazing. And I guess community income is something that I'm really interested in because that honestly is the only way I can make whatever I want meaning that it's not influenced by a gallery or by someone that wants to buy it or clients and then it's literally supported by you guys so I think that is a really interesting thing and a really interesting short-term goal and long-term goal for me now